that has its own classification. Well, the question comes to me, what do we really know? I mean, we, we have a dimension here that we know a whole lot about, but what do we really know about the unknown? Exactly. That, to me, is more interesting than knowing, yeah. <laughs> really. Mm -hmm. uh, the unknown. Uh, for example, I knew a man one time who went to serve in the service for World War One. I'm sorry, World War Two. My brother was with him, served with him, but uh, he went to England, and I somehow I don't know how they had time to do it, but they went touring old homes in England, and he walked into a house. And uh, the other boy was kind of embarrassed, but he said, I wonder if they've got a bathroom in here. I'd like to know where it is. <laughs> he led that man to the bathroom, way down a hall and back around, turned through the three corners and so on. Now, how did he know where the bathroom was? He said it shocked him. All of a sudden, he didn't have to ask where the bathroom was. He, he knew where it was. Now, now how, did, how did that happen? <laughs> Have you got any explanation for that? Uh, that's called clairvoyance in parapsychology, um, where you can pretty much see things that other people can't see or know things that other people couldn't possibly know, like finding your way to the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> you mentioned the paranormal psychology. Is, is that being taught in schools now or colleges? Uh, the last one I heard was Mary Aka, and she was a professor at ETSU, but she's um, she suffered uh, onset dementia pretty fast, and now she's not teaching anymore. I know her very well. I'm very well acquainted. I, I talked to her not long ago on the telephone. Uh, I always thought she was going to write a book on her experiences, but I don't think she plans to now. Uh, well, I, I've said this many times before, and I say it again. When I was growing up in the West, uh, people who believed in ghosts even were afraid to tell it because they were afraid they'd be called ignorant, unlearned, superstitious. And in my lifetime, I have seen the inners change. The biggest interest I find in ghosts now is in the college community and uh, high schools. Hardly a week passes here but what somebody calls me and will say, where can we find a real, they use kind of fun expression, a real live ghost, they'll say. They, mm -hmm. they, want, they say they want to see one. I wonder sometimes if they hold the ground. <laughs> If they did see one, but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, they, they claim they want to see one. I've pinned a few of the college students down. I, I, I've been connected in a roundabout way, Board of Visitors with King College here for years. And uh, I've, I've gotten acquainted with a lot of our students and teachers as well. And I've tried to pin them down and ask them why they had such interest in a spiritual world or things that's unknown to us around us. And two or three of them have admitted that the reason they're so interested in this is because they want to prove to themselves that something exists other than what we have now. What about telepathy? Would that fall under the realm of paranormal mental telepathy, the ability to pick up thoughts? But, you think it would, okay. Have you ever had a personal, we're getting personal now, have you ever had a personal experience with it? I think everyone's had an experience with telepathy. Indeed. When you, um, mm -hmm. you just think that someone's going to call and they call right then, uh, you think about someone you haven't seen in a while and you see them in the street. I think a lot of people have had that experience. Uh, exactly. I, that's one thing I had on my mind. I, my mind turned to the telephone. Many a time a person calls here, and uh, I, I don't know who it is. One time I got bold enough to say, are you there, Lee? And he was there. <laughs> <laughs> Another time, <laughs> it didn't work so well. I, I spoke to somebody that wasn't the right person. But, uh, of course, you can't bet on 100% accuracy. But I have done that many times. Just actually know who was on the other end of the line. Uh, sometime when the doorbell rings, I can just about tell you who's out there. And uh, sometimes it gets a little scary. I mean, the ability 
to think about something that's going to happen, and it does happen, or things like that. Well, now, what about uh, what about if you have a dream that comes true? Would that fall under the realm yes. of paranormal? Yes. I, I want to get this clear because most people think that paranormal is confined to just ghosts yes. here or sound or something other. Uh, I wrote, I do a newspaper article in the paper every week here, and uh, the other day one of my articles and it was on that very theme, and it brought a lot of comment. And I well knew the, the one of the people who participated in. It. Uh, one woman had a dream. There used to be a fine big old resort hotel out in the Fairmount section off Pennsylvania Avenue on Spruce, and one woman had a dream one night that that. The hotel was burning, and she woke up troubled about it. Couldn't rest in the morning. She'd go and look out the window once in a while. She felt so sure that that hotel was going to burn. And about noon, she went and looked out and it was burning. It was on the spot. Well, then her daughter, whom I knew well, and she wasn't an ignorant, unlearned person. She was a super socialite here in town, and very well educated. Uh, she dreamed that a certain service station was going to blow, explode that day. And she had an appointment to go have her car service. And she canceled it because she felt that so strong. And sure enough, the station exploded. Gas fumes that very day and killed several people. Knocked the windows out of the First Baptist Church and was right, right across the street where the ice cream place is now, Sweets and Eats. That's where it was located. And that happened in February of 1947. Well, she wouldn't tell that. Uh, she saved her life by obeying the dream, I guess. But she wouldn't tell that uh, for many, many years. Of course, she is a high society woman here. And she said she thought people think she was, she called it weird. And <laughs> but on her deathbed she told me that story and she told two or three others about it. She said, I've always had an urge to tell it, but I just wouldn't till now. And and she did she did tell that story. We're trying to broaden out here and see what just does come under the realm of paranormal. It's a subject a lot of people are interested in, but they won't admit it sometimes, but they are. And as he said about telepathy, I myself have made a study of that for many years, and I, and I really have had some experiences that I knew had to be beyond my power to do. And I've disobeyed the feeling sometimes and got in trouble. I, I could give you some examples, but I want these people to have the time today. Uh, now, of course, uh, ghostly occurrences would also appear under this, right? Yes. Well, now we have you with us, and we want to give you the opportunity to express yourself. How, I'm going to ask each one this question, so be prepared. <laughs> uh, have, uh, have you ever had a... We've already outlined what the feel of paranormal is. Have you ever had what you would call a definite paranormal experience, such as a ghostly appearance or sound or something? I have. All right. I have. 